We just finished up making a couple carbon fiber parts for the Dark Era one. I have some nose gear doors and hinges. The majority of the aircraft itself is made from carbon fiber, so naturally we get a lot of questions about it. Before we started this whole project, we had to learn a lot about carbon fiber. And today I want to share some important information about this material that will give you a better understanding of it, especially if you want to engineer a part from carbon fiber. So here are five details about carbon fiber you should know. Let's jump right in. Not all carbon fiber is created equal. Most carbon fiber parts start out as a raw cloth like this, which gets combined with a resin. That resin hardens to allow the cloth to hold its shape, giving you a final part like this. The first thing to know about carbon fiber is that it's not all created equal. I'm not talking about the different weave types or the fiber count like 3K versus 6K versus 12K. What I'm referring to is something else, which is the type of carbon fiber and the quality of the cloth itself. Let's talk about the carbon fiber type. Carbon fiber is commonly sold as a roll of woven cloth. There are lots of different weave patterns you can choose from to best fit the application for your part. The cloth itself is made up of strands woven or stitched together. Within those strands are individual filaments of carbon fiber that are smaller than a human hair. These filaments are the different type I'm referring to. The type is a big part of what determines the strength and stiffness of a carbon fiber part. The thing to know is that Manufacturers of carbon fiber like Torre or Hexel all offer a range of different fiber types of varying degrees of strength and stiffness. At the lower end of the spectrum is commercial grade carbon fiber, which is really common. It's less expensive, but it's also lower strength and stiffness compared to higher grade carbon fibers. It's important to use higher grade carbon fibers that are stronger and stiffer when making parts for aerospace applications like aircraft, rockets, or satellites. Each manufacturer has their own nomenclature for this, so pay close attention when selecting your cloth. It's also important to pay close attention to the quality of the cloth weave. The quality is a measure of the number of defects in the cloth. A defect can be anything from broken or frayed strands to imperfections like gaps or skips in the weave pattern. Higher grade cloths limit the number of defects and lower or second grade cloths allow for a higher number of defects. Because not all carbon fiber is created equal, it's important to know the type of fiber you're using and also the quality of your cloth. What's really exciting about getting a handle on these types of details is that you can start to optimize your parts, making them stronger and stiffer without increasing the weight. What that means for us, for the aircraft, is that we can save weight and give that back to useful load for carrying people, baggage, and fuel. Resin is the unsung hero. It's true carbon fiber is a very strong material, but it's only strong when it can hold its shape. As I mentioned earlier, carbon fiber starts out as a raw cloth, but it's not until we combine it with resin that it achieves its overall strength. The proper term here is actually a matrix material, but for this video, we will just stick with calling it resin. Without resin, you wouldn't be able to create carbon fiber parts like this. And in that sense, the resin is the true unsung hero in any carbon fiber part. And selecting the right type of resin is just as critical as selecting the right type of carbon fiber. A simplified analogy is to compare carbon fiber to concrete and rebar. The fibers act as the rebar and the resin acts as the concrete. When you're building a bridge or a building, you wouldn't use just concrete or just rebar. You need both combined to get the full strength required. The same is true in the case of a carbon fiber part. You need the fibers and the resin combined to get the full strength. The fibers, in the case of a carbon fiber part, carry the tensile loads and the resin allows the cloth to maintain its shape but also to carry compressive loads. It's important to not be 100% fixated on the carbon fiber alone but to also focus on the resin as well. You need to get the resin right. Let me tell you a quick story of what can happen if you get the resin wrong. So in our earlier days of starting Dark Arrow, we were doing a lot of experimenting and testing to find the right resins for the aircraft. We were looking for something that had high temperature capability. We'd come across a resin that claimed it could go up to 300F. 
but then when we tested it at high temperature, we found that our parts would soften and bend. The carbon fiber itself was doing its job, but the resin was falling short. This example to us really highlighted how important it is to get your carbon fiber right, but more importantly, to get your resin right as well. Carbon fiber is coated with a secret sauce. We've talked about carbon fiber type and also quality. We've also talked about pairing that with the right type of resin. Another thing to know though, is that before those two can be brought together, carbon fiber manufacturers have to add a coupling agent, also called a sizing or a finish to the carbon fibers so that resin can bind to it. Depending on what type of resin you select, it may not want to wet out and chemically bond to carbon fiber. It's kind of like how oil and water don't want to mix. You wouldn't want the same situation to happen with your resin and your carbon fiber. Carbon fiber manufacturers add this coupling agent so that the resin and the carbon fiber will work together. These coupling agents are often kept secret by the carbon fiber manufacturers. They won't tell you exactly what they're using, but they will tell you the general chemistry it's compatible with. For example, the carbon fiber that you purchase is often treated to be chemically compatible with epoxy resin. You want to keep the coupling agent in mind if you're about to do something new or non-standard with your resin chemistry. Process determines properties. We talked about the fiber type, the resin, and the finish on the fibers. The process used to combine carbon fiber and resin also plays a role in the final properties of the carbon fiber part. There are a lot of different ways to make a carbon fiber part, like wet layup, pre-preg, infusion, and even 3D printing. Each one of these approaches will give you a different fiber to resin ratio. It'll even give you different defects. What that means is a different degree of strength and stiffness depending on your method. Additionally, the way that you cure it and your cure temperature can also affect the final part properties. There really is no best approach. The best approach really depends on the design of your carbon fiber part and your manufacturing goals. There are pros and cons to each. For example, wet layup is low cost and easy to do, but the parts that you get end up being a little bit variable in terms of fiber to resin ratio and a little bit on the heavier side. pre pre carbon fiber can produce high quality, lightweight parts, but oftentimes requires costly tooling like chest freezers and autoclaves. Additionally, there are less combinations of resins and weaves to pick from, and the pre preg resin has a shelf life. We use Infusion on the Dark Arrow 1 because it is a good balance. It produces repeatable results with fiber to resin ratio similar to pre preg and good surface finish. The biggest drawback with Infusion is that it is tricky to develop a standard process. The key thing to keep in mind is that the process you use to combine carbon fiber and resin will partially determine the final properties of your part. Test or be tested. As you can see, there are a lot of different variables that affect the final material properties of a carbon fiber part. Carbon fiber isn't like metal. With metals, there's a lot of published data on its strength under a wide range of conditions. Because there are so many variables that go into carbon fiber, there aren't good sources of published material properties available to use for design. This means that you need to perform testing on your parts to verify that they meet the desired requirements. In the aerospace realm, one of the best ways to do this is to use what's called the building block approach. With this method, you start by testing small coupons and then work your way up to small sub-assemblies, then larger assemblies, and finally the full structures. Each test article needs to be representative of the materials and process used in your final structure. If you wanted to use an FEA program to simulate your composite structures, you still need some measured material properties to feed into the FEA in the beginning. You also need some measured numbers to check your FEA against, so there's no way around it. You need to do testing. This mountain of testing might seem like a lot of work, but if you don't do this testing in the beginning, your part will be put to the test in service, and this would be a bad time to find out that it's not up for the job. So, is this all worth it? If you put this all together correctly, what you end up with are strong, lightweight parts that have a really long lifespan that aren't as vulnerable to corrosion and fatigue like metal parts. So for us, the short answer is yes. Hopefully some of this information is useful and you can use it on your next carbon fiber project. 
If there are other details or information about carbon fiber that you find interesting that weren't covered in this video, leave them in the comments below. We'll continue the discussion down there. Otherwise, we'll catch you guys in the next video. For example, wet layup is a process that we can use, but we don't. 